top methylfolate side effects. So methylfolate side effects are not that uncommon, but still some people seem to experience it more than others. Is there a pattern to these side effects? If you have MTHFR gene mutation, maybe you have personal experience with these side effects or maybe you've heard about the possibility of getting them. Methylfolate can be a very potent supplement for people with MTHFR gene mutation and it can also be very helpful for them. Uh, but some people don't seem to tolerate it as, as well as others. Why is that? How do you know if you're having these uh, methylfolate side effects and what are the most common side effects that are seen? Hi, my name is Dr. Taranella, and I've helped hundreds of people with MTHFR gene mutation improve their physical, mental, and overall health by helping them sort out and balance their health based on their genetics. In this video, we're going to uh, answer the questions posed above and other methylfolate side effect questions. Okay, so the most common methylfolate side effects that I see from methylfolate can be broadly categorized as um, <clears throat> overmethylation. And overmethylation, uh, put simply, uh, is the process um, that occurs from taking too much methylfolate or other methyl donors. Now, methylation is the process when optimized that allows for all the positive benefits of taking methylfolate. And methylfolate is at the center, one of the main uh, key ingredients for allowing that uh, methylation process to run optimally. Um, however, too much methylfolate will actually cause that methylation process to shut down and leads to the symptoms uh, that we would consider side effects like fatigue, muscle aches, joint aches, depression, and possibly anxiety too. Um, so the same symptoms that methylfolate supplementation um, actually helps can actually trigger those symptoms to get worse when given in too high of doses. Um, so this problem is very common and I see it uh, most commonly in people that are taking Deplin, which is a very potent methylfolate supplement. Um, in fact, uh, most people with MTHFR gene mutations don't need this much methylfolate. Some do. Um, that would be uh, the more the exception and not the rule. It's, I mean, it's somewhere around like 7.5 to 5, it comes in 7.5 and 15 milligrams, which is pretty high for most people. Um, so we can sort of place the uh, first three symptoms, uh, muscle aches, joint, muscle aches slash joint aches, fatigue, and anxiety into that overmethylation category. Um, remember, joint aches and fatigue uh, can also be symptoms from undermethylation, but when given in too, uh, too high a dose, the symptoms actually flip, leading to worsening of those symptoms. And most of the time, this kind of comes about uh, when people are taking methylfolate for a while, um, and then all of a sudden, you know, they start to uh, feel like it's not working, and in, when in fact they're they've kind of gone uh, over the uh, over the hill, and their their methylation process is now under functioning instead of uh, optimized, and um, <clears throat> anxiety can can occur from over methylation too, um, but some people just don't tolerate uh, higher amounts of methylfolate, and technically uh, in some cases it's not necessarily from over methylation, so. Um, you can maybe add another um, uh, category here um, and put, put anxiety in a separate category or, or a separate symptom uh, rather than overmethylation. And it has to do more with the person's unique genetics and other lifestyle things that are going on. Uh, and that's why we emphasize, you know, taking a broader look at what's going on with the person, not just treating MTHFR. Um, but... Uh, <clears throat> So that's you know important to consider. Uh, the fourth uh, side effect, for, uh, methylfolate side effect to consider, um, is uh, occurs in the digest digestive tract, uh, pain or discomfort, acid reflux, uh, things like that when taking methylfolate. Um, so upon taking methylfolate or, or sometimes other B vitamins, people will start to have abdominal pain or discomfort, uh, like I said, indigestion, and they may actually have other sort of systemic symptoms too, like rash 
or headaches um, or other symptoms. In these cases, you may wrongly attribute these symptoms to something in the pill that you took, um, when in fact it may be related to what's going on inside your digestive tract as a result of taking that. Um, so things like um, uh, SIBO or bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine, fungal overgrowth in the small intestine, um, uh, generally not absorbing your methylfolate, and so it could be um, occurring in the large intestine as well, other pathogenic microbes uh, in the small intestine. All these things can sort of trigger this uh, pattern of skin rashes, uh, and headaches, um, and but more so the symptoms of indigestion or you know generally not feeling well after you take it. Um, other things can cause the skin rashes and headaches, but uh, the nausea, indigestion type of feelings uh, could be from something going on in the, in the digestive tract. Um, and you know again, while digestive problems could be one of the main causes for these symptoms when taking methylfolate and having these side effects. Uh, a poor response to MTHFR gene mutation uh, treatment in general, um, you know, lots of other things can, can do this too, not just digestive issues. So again, that's why we want to make sure we're taking a broader look at what's going on uh, with your system, not just attributing it to uh, well, I have MTHFR, so I need to take, you know, X amount of methylfolate. Uh, if you're getting these side effects, take a step back and look at the bigger picture of your, your health. Um, so, and then the last thing, uh, th there's there's probably other uh, methylfolate side effects that I'm not considering. I'm trying to give the kind of the bigger picture uh, of where, where most people get hung up with here. And so the last one would be, uh, with allergies and histamine. So um, a lot of people don't consider the uh, histamine side of things when taking methylfolate, but when histamine is broken down, one of the main process that it, uh, occurs to break down histamine is converting histamine into methylhistamine through an enzyme called histamine and methyltransferase or HNMT. And uh, as long as that enzyme is working fine, you will create the methylated histamine when you start taking more methylfolate. Um, and that's fine as long as you break your, hist your methylated histamine down efficiently as well. If you don't, that methyl histamine is actually stronger than <clears throat> the regular histamine and your, hist uh, your histamine symptoms or allergies can actually get worse. Um, and so you got to make sure you're able to clear out the uh, the steps after uh, histamine, uh, methylated histamine, so you don't get those symptoms. Um, so, Hey, I hope this video was useful in helping you think about and understand the methylfolate side effects or side effects that may occur from taking methylfolate. If it was, please click on the like button. This helps me to decide which things people are most interested in. So next videos will be more targeted towards what people are interested in. Um, Keep in mind that methylfolate supplementation is a pretty broad topic and many other questions may come about like how much methylfolate you should take for different types of MTHFR gene mutations and that wasn't really covered. If you do have specific questions about uh, things like this, um, you can pick up my uh, book on Amazon. It's called MTHFR Gene Mutation Demystified. Um, we'll go into much more detail on these types of things and other related SNPs and what to do about those as well. Um, there's many other topics, you know, surrounding MTHFR that you might find useful, and I will be posting other videos uh, soon uh, related to MTHFR and other things. So if you do uh, like this kind of information, you can um, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.